Hello there! While the snow allows for various fun activities, allow me to take you on a little ride into Marozzo's place for the sharp sword and large buckler. Let me begin by saying that Marozzo did a comparatively awesome job in describing his actions in this section, making it very easy to learn if you are starting with Bolognese swordsmanship. Our first action is a parry and repost. Start in Cola Longa e Alta with the left foot forward and your sword on your right side. Our opponent throws a stoccata, a thrust from below, which we parry with the false edge from beneath while stepping to our right with the right foot. This parry directs the thrust towards our left side. From there we launch a quick counter in form of a slicing reverso to the legs. I've also seen an interpretation with a crumpau like motion of the sword, which can be a valid action, but I don't think it's what Morozzo had in mind. It's not from beneath and a repose to the legs makes less sense than a reverso to the head. After our repost, we withdraw our right behind our left leg while we throw a mandrito to the opponent's sword hand. Depending on your measure, a mandrito to the head, if close, or to the sword if you're further away, are also valid adaptations of this play. Finally, step back with your left foot, make a mezzo volta, so a half turn, with your body and hand to assume coda longa estreta for the next chapter. Here, we initiate the play with a thrust from below while advancing with the left foot. As our opponent parries, we continue with a mandrito to the legs, ending in porta di ferro larga. Note that Marozzo doesn't specify a thrust on the inside or outside. Thrusting to the upper left to open up the lower right might be a good guess and the exercise I show here but as always feel free to play around and adapt. From Porta di Ferro Larga, we defend any blow with a rising false, stepping with our left foot to the left side. I show a falso manco here, but you could just do the falso parry from chapter 85 again as well. We counter with the mandrito to the legs once again while placing our buckler into their sword hand and letting our right foot follow behind the left, that is to your left side. Don't let your blade stop and return with a defensive reverso while stepping back with both feet. You end in Coda Longa e Alta, where you can start the whole drill over again or proceed to chapter 87. I think these plays contrast the sword and buckler play of 133 pretty well. While we have a few common themes and motions like shield strikes, Marozzo really focuses a lot on striking the legs in these plays. Note that he doesn't go directly for the legs, as a priest of 133 would dismiss such attacks as too risky. Rather, he is setting his opponent up, drawing him out of position. For now, I hope you enjoyed this interpretation and can put it to good use in your training. Remember to hit the like button as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much and take care.